Our scripture this morning comes from Matthew, the 21st chapter, the first 11 verses. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her and tie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs lead, has need of them and will send them back right away. This took place to fulfill what had been pro spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on the donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Disciples went and did as he had instructed them, and they brought the donkey in the colt, and they placed their coats on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Jesus entered the temple. Today, we observe Palm Sunday. It's a time of reflection when people rape palm branches and laid them on the ground as long as their coats. They saw Jesus coming into the city on a donkey and they saw the procession that followed him. There were many that day that wanted to see Jesus Christ be made a king, but only because they thought that he would overthrow the Roman government. Since the days of the Maccabean Revolution 200 years before, the palm had represented independence to the Jewish people. While they felt the Roman oppression, the Jewish waved the palm branches it's their way of saying to the Romans, one day we will be free. One day we will be free. Jesus came to free us, not from oppression, not from the trials and the troubles of life, but from the sin that oppresses us. The city that day was filled with excitement. They came expecting to see Jesus come, come into the festival that they may be united and together throw the Roman government over. But the Romans were aware of that and they had sent extra soldiers, additional forces into the city in case something like that occurred. The people lined the streets heading into Jerusalem. They waited to see Jesus come into the city and they waited to see what would happen. Jesus came riding in on a donkey, down the Mount of Olives and across the Kidron Village Valley, then up to the hills to the gates of the city he rode. Jesus, as everyone else, knew what it meant for him to ride a donkey into the city of Jerusalem it was the way that kings before him for centuries had proceeded to take their rule. The Roman authorities came riding in on large white stallions with their armies marching behind them. Jesus came in on a donkey, a lowly animal which signified peace. It was a sign of a humble leader who wished for a peaceful rule instead of a rule of aggression and expansion of their kingdoms. Jesus came that they might know peace. He knew what this meant and what the people would think when they saw him come into the city this way. He came into the city with shouts of Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, which meant save us. You have to wonder if some of those who stood with palm branches waved and laying their cloaks upon the ground were also some of the crowd who on Good Friday 
went to Calvary's hill and yelled, crucify him, crucify him. He's no king. The Romans were an oppressive people. They wanted them out of their land. And they believed that Jesus, with the miracles that he had done, the power with which he had taught, was one who could do this. They looked for power and they looked for might in a military fashion. The one who had the ability to call down legions of angels was not there for that purpose. He was going to a cross to die for sins that you and I might be redeemed. Sins that we had committed, he paid for. The crowds wanted to see the restoration of their land. They wanted to see the former power that they had once had, the former wealth that was once in their land that they enjoyed. But Jesus taught that the kingdom of God was like a little mustard seed. They wanted to see majesty and honor displayed. Jesus taught that the land and the religion that he brought was like a small seed growing quietly. No one knows that it's there. They sought freedom from the bondage of Rome. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He also taught that he was the way, the truth and the life. And no one came into the Father but by him. Even though Jerusalem accepted him only that one day, there were many from Galilee there for the Passover. They knew who Jesus was, and they were loyal to him. They knew what he had done. They knew the power that he had, the miracles that he had performed. They wanted to see him honored. James Stewart, the Scottish pastor, said that even though the tribute was only for that one day, as he entered into Jerusalem as a king, he was living out the parable that he was. One who was a king, one who was without sin, one who loved us enough to go to a cross as a criminal and die in our stead. Palm Sunday still lies ahead of us. It will not allow us to rest. It calls on us to make a decision. It will not allow us to ignore it. Palm Sunday and all of its choices confronts us. So we have to choose, what are we going to do about this king? What about this one who is coming before us? Will he be our king today? How about next week? How about next month? There's much to understand about one who would be king. For Jesus, his fame was easily gained. Everyone knew that he was coming to Jerusalem and the crowds gathered to see him, to encourage what they wanted to happen. A great multitude laid down their garments on the road and they cut down the branches from the palm trees and placed them before him, laid them on the ground in front of him. And soon all of Jerusalem was excited and wanted to know what was happening. Some asked who he is. They called him a prophet. Much more than that is he. Jesus was the reason for the attention that day. They all coped to see him. They all came and tried to find a spot to put their eyes upon him. Everyone wanted to see the parade that came into that town. They had no trouble drawing a crowd for each and every one of them wanted to know who he was and wondered what he would do. It had been that way throughout his ministry in Galilee. Everywhere he went, great crowds came to hear him teach. They sought him out. The common people flocked to him. They heard him gladly. They took hope in what he said. 
and Galilee thousands came to hear him teach on the side of a mountain. His fame spread not only in Galilee, but beyond. When he went into Jericho, the people came to see him off to Jerusalem, believing that he was going to set up a kingdom, but not knowing what kind. This happened because who he was and the things he spoke and the things he did and what he had meant to the people. On Palm Sunday, many usually gather in this land at church. The following Sunday, Easter Sunday, even more are usually there. They know who Jesus is. They've heard about him. But like the crowds that day, sometimes they're not sure what it means. Sometimes our affections for him can be weak. And sometimes our commitments are very, very shallow. Our interest in him can be short-lived. Jesus came to Jerusalem knowing that he was to die on the cross. Even his disciples didn't completely comprehend that. He knew what was at stake. Your soul, my soul. Jesus had made the commitment that he would leave the glory of heaven and come and die as a criminal in this world rather than to live in that glory for all eternity without you or without me. We are that precious to him. He gave us the forgiveness of our sins. He redeemed us for them. For that, many people believe that one or two Sundays a year, if they show up at church, should be sufficient worship. What a shame. I ask you to take a look at the depth of your commitment to Jesus. I ask you to take a serious look at how important he is to you, your family, your life. Decide for yourself, is Jesus the king of your heart? Or does the world call to you louder than he does? Does the peace that he offers hold a prominent place in your life? Or do the things of this world mean more to you? We, like the crowd that day, must decide. We must choose what we're going to do about this man who has come before us. The truth is only you know the answer to that. Only you can decide. We need to understand that our allegiance to Jesus is something we make or we let it go. For most, it costs nothing. It costs nothing for those people to watch that parade of people following Jesus into the city that day. Many of the bystanders joined in shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, save us. Yet that was all they did. They came and they saw and they asked what was going on and then they walked away. Jesus has a different view of that. He says, if anyone come after me, let him pick up his cross and come and follow me. No easy roads promised. No easy time is given. It cost everything. Jesus said, if a man would save his life, he will lose it. But if he loses his life for my sake, he will find it. The commitment is ours. The promise from Jesus is ours. Many people believe that a commitment to Jesus should cost nothing. Diedrich Bonhoeffer in his book, The Cost of Discipleship, said that cheap grace is the enemy of the church. It requires no repentance, no discipleship, not even a confession of sin. But without the cross, know this, 
There is no king. There is no kingdom. We are not called to stand on the side of the road and clap or yell. We are called to follow and serve and to give our life to the one who gave it to us, to follow him. They looked that day to see Jesus come into Jerusalem. Some looked that day for him to perform a miracle. Others hoped to hear him speak and teach. Some looked for Jesus to set up his kingdom that day. What did we come this day to find? Easter is a beautiful time. When the stone has been rolled back, that heavy stone that was rolled in front of his tomb pushed away, resurrection has occurred. Our victory won. Our home in heaven complete. But before that happened, there was a cross, a debt that had to be paid, pain and suffering taken for us. He didn't deserve it, we did, but he paid our price. We're called to serve him as the king of kings. There's no cheap grace if you follow Jesus. We have to open our hearts. We have to do what he has prepared us to do and strengthened us to do for his kingdom. The crowds that day said this to Jesus. He's the prophet of Nazareth. He come from Galilee. He's far more than that. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. But more important to each of us, who is he to us? Who is he in your heart? He is our sovereign and our Lord. And we are held in his kingdom by the blood that he shed on the cross. It's not too much for him to ask us to follow him, to love him, to be faithful to him, and to serve him. May we, this Palm Sunday, see our opportunities, see the chance for our commitment, and make it. He gave it to us, that gift of eternal life that we have. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this day to worship. May we come rejoicing. May the plan that you had for your Son to redeem us resonate in our hearts. May we examine the cost that you paid for our salvation. And may we be found praising you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace. Lord, we need to be thankful people for this wonderful gift of eternal life that you have chosen to give to us. Lord, we didn't earn it. You made the sacrifice of your son. We pray for peace in this difficult time and those who have suffered and felt the affliction of this virus that has been so rampant. We look to you as our hope, as the way to live in peace, not as the world would give, but a peace that comes only from you. Bless us, lead us, and guide us in your name, we pray. Amen.